official, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has named Nicole Shanahan, a lawyer from Oakland, as his vice presidential pick, becoming the first 2024 presidential hopeful to actually announce a running mate. The Democratic Party is supposed to be the party of compassion. It is supposed to be the party of diplomacy and science. It is supposed to be the party of civil liberties and free speech. And most importantly, the party of the middle class and the American dream. While I know many Democrats still abide by those values, I want to point out, and I've been in touch with many people in the Democratic Party, I do believe they've lost their way in their leadership. Now, RFK Jr.'s third party run is causing consternation for both GOP presumptive nominee Donald Trump and President Joe Biden. Trump actually took to Truth Social early this morning, 1.52 a.m. to be exact, to rail against RFK Jr. and take a jab at his number two pick, writing, quote, RFK Jr. is the most radical left candidate in the race by far. His running mate, Nicole Shanahan, is even more liberal than him. Expect him and her to be indicted any day now, probably for environmental fraud. He is crooked Joe Biden's political opponent, not mine. I love that he is running. Hmm. But of course, RFK Jr. isn't the only one that Biden and Trump need to worry about. According to multiple reports, Nikki Haley may be out of the race, but voters who supported her are very much in play and up for grabs. A New York Times story highlights how Trump is yet to, to reconcile with former rival Haley, while Biden's camp is testing messages that could draw in Haley voters. Trump's campaign isn't worried, telling the outlet that a Biden-Trump rematch will pull most Republicans back into the typical GOP fold. So we've talked about this uh, before. Mm -hmm. We, we uh, had some warning that it was going to be this, uh, this woman, Nicole Shanahan, um, ex-wife of Sergey Brin, the co-founder of Google, um, someone with a considerable war chest of her own to contribute to the campaign efforts, someone who has identified as a Democrat in the past, she explained there, but has differences of opinions like RFK Jr. does with how the Democratic Party behaved during COVID and on some other matters. So here we are. This is the, this is the ticket, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's an interesting one. It is, because it goes to one of the central questions. Questions, I think, about the RFK Jr. candidacy. Does he take more votes from Biden or from Trump? Or does he alternatively just bring in people who are disaffected by the existing choices, wouldn't otherwise vote? Now, as you say, Ms. Shanahan is a progressive. You would think maybe that does sort of uh, increase the appeal to Democrats. But of course, one of the things about her having such a vast personal fortune is that she could assist with the effort to actually get their names on the ballot. And that's that, to a large extent, is the ball game for them. Yeah, that's going to be a big part of it. Um, you know, polls have shown uh, when RFK Jr. is included up against Trump and Biden, it, it detracts from both of them. Mm. It detracts from Biden a little bit more. That's what mm. polls are showing us. So I see Trump, you know, smartly leaning into that framing, saying these are radical progressives. Look at what they've said on environmental issues. Look at what they've said on gun rights. Look at all those things. You know, he would, RFK Jr. was just, a, he was a Democrat and, and then some, sure. uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe with a little bit of difference on vaccines. But then when that became this huge issue, and frankly, a lot of <laughs> progressives and Democrats had different opinions about vaccines until that became a tribal dividing line mm. where if you have any skepticism of of vaccines or requiring them frankly you have to be on the republican side basically or you have to be a, you you can't be mm. in good standing in the democratic party right. so it is it is interesting uh, to see that R obviously rfk junior has gotten i, I think a, a warmer reception in conservative media at least up until now than he has in liberal or mainstream media mm -hmm. uh, frankly they they won't even when they interview him i can't remember if it was cnn or msnbc they wouldn't even play the entire interview mm -hmm. um, so he has uh, uh, so he, he's an interesting character. Like you said, I tend to think third-party candidates, including RFK Jr., draw it, – it's all of what you said. Mm -hmm. they, yes, they draw from Republicans and Democrats. They also draw on a, on a reservoir of voters mm -hmm. who are dissatisfied and, frankly, would not cast their vote for sure. either of the other two people if, if that was not an option. Sure. We love to accuse them of being spoilers, but it's like, well, I, I, I frankly don't – 
by that a lot of the times. No, and, and here I will have to confess that I got something wrong in the early days of RFK Jr.'s bid. I really thought that there was a sort of a, a surge in polling support for him that would just evaporate over time, that people had seen the name Kennedy, had thought, oh, JFK, and, and of course, the, the original Robert F. Kennedy, and thought, oh, well, that, that sounds good, or that sounds interesting, and that uh, over time that support would just go. It hasn't really. I mean, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is not going to be the next president of the United States, but it is now a real candidacy. And let's say he ends up even with slightly less than his polling level. Sure. 10, 12 percent. I mean, that matters a lot in an election that we think is going to be decided by one or two percentage points. Yeah, even six, seven, eight percent would be the mm. best showing for a third party candidate since uh, since Perot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, Why do you think he's polling so well? I, Relatively. I, no, I, I think he has tapped into a dissatisfaction that mm. is felt throughout America. The fact that we have a rematch mm. between, we have an exact rematch. We did this already. Joe Biden, Donald Trump, two extremely unpopular political figures. Mm -hmm. um, Joe Biden is is viewed as not the right candidate necessarily mm. by most Democrats mm. are concerned that he's too old. They see him on camera. Those concerns are getting worse every day because frankly, he's getting older every day. Mm. It's not, there's nothing you can do sure. to assuage that concern because it's in our faces. And of course, Donald Trump has alienated a vast swath of the electorate, including some of his own Republicans. Uh, I know, you know, Republicans in my, I'm from Michigan, a mm -hmm. quintessential swing state. There are Republicans in my family and, and friends who would really, who would happily, who don't want Joe Biden to be president, mm -hmm. think the economy, the economy is terrible under him and his policies are terrible, and would vote for anyone with an R next to the name, but not Donald Trump, because mm -hmm. they're sick of him. So people have this frustration that sure. this is really all we have, and frankly, the fact that RFK Jr., compared to them, looks youthful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's an older oh, man, too, but he right, looks youthful compared right. to the two of them. And uh, the Kennedy name does something, but mm -hmm. it's not just the name. Sure. It's, it's helped, I think, get him in the conversation, mm -hmm. but he's tapped into a real discernible frustration out there. I, I wonder as well, does that frustration expand beyond Biden and Trump, who have all the feelings that you mentioned, to a broader skepticism of, you know, the establishment or, or the orthodoxy or whatever? Because he's clearly playing into that. I don't don't frankly care for his views on vaccines, but he does, I think, raise legitimate questions about whether there, you know, certain opinions are excluded from the conversation, whether certain point of views, points of view are excluded from the conversation. And I wonder, is that in a way as potent a calling card for him as the clear dissatisfaction with both Trump and Biden? Absolutely. I mean, he's the he's really um uh, talked about and campaigned on, you know, civil liberty. She brought mm. that up. She's saying that, you know, where wasn't the Democratic Party the party of civil liberties? And, you know, we've done a lot of reporting on the show on, right, whatever you think, you can totally disagree with him. I disagree with him on aspects of his COVID stuff and, uh, frankly, a lot else. I disagree with his gun and environmental sure. policies sure. very much so. But, um, but, it is. It has been pretty clear that there was, frankly, a concerted effort mm. um, on the part of the government to make it harder for social media companies mm. to allow dissenting views on some of these subjects. And, and that looks, even setting aside the vaccine issue, it looks mm. pretty foolish on some of the COVID claims, which you know, where the experts were saying, "Oh, it's this, it's this, and this," and we find out, well, the experts have changed their mind a bunch of mm -hmm. times, and you couldn't, you couldn't discuss it. You couldn't even discuss the lab leak theory on mm -hmm. Facebook for a long time, and now that's the energy department's leading theory for what happened. I mean, right. there's legitimate deb debate about it, and you couldn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I think he's tapped into a lot of those um, those frustrations. Now, obviously, the system is so rigged mm -hmm. against third-party candidates. Right. They've made it, both parties right. have have conspired to make it difficult sure. for you to vote for someone other Absolutely. than the main parties. We have this winner-take-all system mm -hmm. in most states. So like you said, it, it's gonna be hard for, him, it's very hard for him to win the election. Sure. Sure. They even win a state, but he he will make a difference. And you know, if if either Trump or Biden want to capture some of his voters, mm -hmm. they can speak to the concerns of the disaffected, the concerns of the anti-establishment. Mm -hmm. But they're not doing it, and it's given it's given voice to to someone like him. It has, and absolutely, I think he is going to matter. The question is, who is he going to matter most right. to? Right. And I really don't have a, a great sense of that because you know I can conjure up in my mind the classic Biden voter. I can conjure up in my mind the classic Trump voter. Who is the RFK Jr. voter? I mean, yes, someone who is dissatisfied or uncomfortable with some of the issues we've just been talking about, but is it 
left-wing Democrats? Is it people in the middle? You know, that whole process yeah. is really interesting to me. I mean, I think it's, yeah, it is, it is interesting. I think it's, I think it's Democrats who mm. were solid Democrats until COVID mm. and to remember how long their schools were shut down mm -hmm. and, uh, and all of that. I think, it's, uh, I think it's also some Republicans who, um, who are sick to death of Donald Trump mm -hmm. and, but would, could never vote for Joe Biden and, and, and are looking for someone, someone else. I think it's some, um, I, I mean, frankly, it could be some Republicans as well who mm -hmm. are pretty to the right on a lot of this stuff and, and think Trump didn't get the job done last sure. time. Trump railed against the administrative state and the deep state and how mm -hmm. it's weaponized and how it's hurting him. Didn't do anything about it when he was president. Right. So maybe people who agree with Trump on those things, but are looking for and obviously the mm. Joe Biden isn't going to do anything sure. about those things. They think Joe Biden has rigged that whole system against right. them. So maybe uh, maybe a Kennedy, and then maybe also just some centrist or moderate mm -hmm. people who I mean the Kennedy name speaks to a kind of sure. moderate politics and mm -hmm. you know, J JFK, a moderate sure. figure in many ways, and uh, and and have favorable memories there and, 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 and are listening to him and thinking that he doesn't sound any worse than anyone right. else, I think he's going to take from all three buckets. Which is what separates him from, as a third party candidate, from the fourth and fifth party candidates, right? right. You know, Jill Stein or Cornell West have right. a view that they articulate effectively, but it's not going to pull any disaffected Republicans or any people right. in the center ground. And we are still, you know, we're still looking at whether there's been all this conversation about whether RFK Jr. would potentially be the Libertarian Party right. candidate. Um, I predict that's not going to happen. Mm. There was some interest from some Libertarian Party leadership, um, the rank and file in the Libertarian Party are, are going to hold against him, obviously, mm. his, the, the, the things it's I'm a, holding against him. Which is that he's not really a Libertarian, right? Et cetera. So that was always yeah. going to be a difficult match, so I don't think that's going to happen, yeah. but we will see. There's still some time left until the election, and we will continue to follow the campaign, of course. More Rising right after this.